The Deathmatch AI kit is an add-on that includes a set of behavior trees and behavior tree tasks that are designed to eliminate all the enemy targets. The Deathmatch AI kit is an add-on for Behavior Designer and the Ultimate Character Controller, so it does require some assets to be imported first. I've already done that in this video, um, and the assets that you'll want to import are Behavior Designer, Behavior Designer Movement Pack, the ultimate character controller, first person controller, or the third person controller, either of those three. And then you'll finally want to import the behavior designer and ultimate character controller integration package. You can find that integration package on the Opsev websites under the download section for behavior designer. Now in this video, I'm going to go through two different things. I'm going to show setting up a deathmatch specific scene, and then I'm also going to show setting up a new deathmatch agent. Now the deathmatch AI kit, as a demo scene, it has a complete deathmatch scene where there's like a scoreboard and different teams and all that good stuff that you'd expect to find in a deathmatch scene. But I'm imagining that most people in their projects, they won't want to create a deathmatch specific scene. They'll instead want to use this advanced behavior tree for their own enemy AI. So this first section is kind of good to just kind of see how the deathmatch AI kit works and kind of see it in the demo scene. But I'm imagining that the final product, you will not want to actually use this demo scene or any other kind of the demo scene logic. But if you just happen to be creating a game that has a deathmatch scene in it, then this is perfect for that. So as you can see here, I have an empty scene. And the very first thing that I want to do, if I want to create a deathmatch specific scene, is I want to go to the setup manager of the deathmatch AI kit. And then I'm going to want to click setup project. What this is going to do is it's going to add a few uh, demo inputs as well as some layers that are used specifically for the deathmatch scene. Now, if you're wanting to see how this deathmatch scene works in your own project, I recommend creating a different project and then going through this setup process, this setup project uh, process, just so that it doesn't mess with any of the layers or inputs that you have in your own project. So this is a perfect use case for it in that I have a brand new scene or a brand new project just with the assets required. And I'm going through the process of setting up the deathmatch scene. So, so now, now that we've set up the project, um, we can click set up scene. And you'll notice that when I click set up scene, it will add three different game objects. It adds the game game object, which is from the ultimate character controller. So you should be familiar with that. It will add this startup game object that spawns this deathmatch manager prefab. This is the prefab that uh, should actually get spawned and kind of determines how many agents get spawned, uh, the number of scores and or the number of kills until uh, the deathmatch game is over and kind of if it's a team game and whatnot. So this just kind of contains all the settings. And then there's this waypoints game object. And underneath that are three different waypoints that are randomly placed. And these waypoints uh, are used by the behavior tree so that the agents can traverse there uh, to d a different area. Um, you'll notice that one of the messages that comes up is that the waypoints have been added and they have been you they can be repositioned manually. Um, you can also add more to this list, and it will uh, dynamically retrieve the waypoint list without you having to set anything. So let's go ahead and just hit play. And we should see a whole bunch of chaos when it starts playing. We can see, actually, I just hit pause. So let me go ahead and hit play again. And now you can see that three different, there were three different waypoints and the agents just spawned in those waypoints and they are running their deathmatch behavior tree logic. Um, if we actually open up Behavior Designer, we can see I just clicked on one of the agents and he, oh, he, he must be dead right now. So that's why the behavior tree is not active. But yeah, so here's an active behavior tree and um, in this branch that is currently running, uh, he, he's running these few different tasks and one of these tasks are to actually attack the enemy. So, so that, that part is working well. Um, you'll notice that we get a whole bunch of warnings and we're getting those warnings because this um let's see where is it at where is it at 
the kinematic object manager has a start character count of one, whereas we are actually spawning eight characters. So I'm just going to type eight for that. There's a very, very, very small performance boost by doing that. Um, you'll never notice it in the profile either. So, but it's good to just kind of clear all the warnings. So now we go ahead and hit play and we'll see that the agents spawn again. And I just hit pause again. Um, escape is pause when you set up the inputs. So, um, but we're not getting those warnings anymore. Um, the one thing that I do want to point out is that this waypoints, it has this ID of um, 45894, and this is just a random number, but that ID corresponds to the same ID under the deathmatch manager. This is the prefab that gets spawned, and you can see that the 45894 value is right here. So that's how, when the behavior tree loads, the waypoints dynamically get added and the it's based off of this ID in order to find the different waypoints. So that's how you set up a very basic scene. You can also go through the deathmatch um, demo scene, which kind of you've probably seen it in the, uh, the marketing material where we have the demo of kind of you can select a team, you can select the number of players and the number of players per team and all that good stuff. So We've gone through that. Now I'm imagining that the thing that most people will do is they don't want to create a deathmatch specific scene. Instead, they just want to use the AI, uh, the behavior trees within their own scene. So we're gonna do that within this scene that I've already created. And this scene just has the player Nolan right now. And you can see when I hit play, um, not too much will happen. Uh, I can just kinda walk around and I'm a regular character here. So we want to add this agent using the Deathmatch AI kit. So I'm gonna do that by first dragging in a new game object that I wanna use for the Deathmatch AI kit. In this case, I'm using Nolan since that's the model that I have available, but the model doesn't really matter. Now, um, the first thing that we want to do is go to the Ultimate Character Controller Character Manager and we want to set up Nolan to be able to be used as an AI agent. And we're gonna do that by going through this character manager. I've created a couple of different videos on this character manager. So make sure you go through that first. Um, I'm not really going into the details on what each of these options mean, but we do want to select nav mesh agent in this case, because we are working with Unity's nav mesh agent. You can see I already have a nav mesh that is baked in the scene, or at least there should have been. If not, let me go and bake it again. Well, I'm pretty sure that it's there. I guess Unity's just not displaying it. Oh, I, I think I have gizmos off. Yeah, there we go. So now the gizmos are on, we can see we have a nav mesh. So that looks good. Um, and now let's go ahead and build the character and we'll create our ragdoll. Now when I hit play, we have an AI agent, but this AI agent doesn't have any logic to it. So now when I hit play, you can see this AI agent is just standing there, which is what you'd expect. Um, this character's array resized, I got that message again. So I want to go to the kinematic object manager and then just specify the character count. So now, now when I hit play, I shouldn't get any more warnings. And so that looks good. Um, now let's go ahead and let's add a weapon to the AI agent. Now I'm adding this weapon because when I go through the agent manager with the deathmatch AI kit, uh, it will automatically detect all the available weapons that are assigned to the agent. So this, by, by creating these uh, items ahead of time, it will just automatically detect when I create the agent. Um, you can obviously add new items later on, but this is kind of just a convenient way to quickly get going with that. So let me go ahead and add the assault rifle. Now again, this I've created some other videos on this item manager, so this should be very familiar to you. So I'm not gonna go through the options since this is all specific to the ultimate character controller. And we want an assault rifle bullet, and so now we're gonna build that item. So now, oh, I guess I called it assault agent, assault rifle. And let me just go to the third person, the actual visible mesh, 
and let me just rename it assault rifle and while we're here we can see that this assault rifle it's not positioned correctly so I'm gonna position correctly by just taking the one that is already set up and just copying that transform if I can click on the right item so now I copied that transform let me go to the assault rifle that I am now adding and I will paste those component values so now when I hit play we can see that the agent will have the assault rifle in his hand and he still won't be doing anything since he doesn't have any actual logic attached to him but at least we're getting one step further so that now looks good so now let's get to the deathmatch specific portion and we can go to the agent tab and we will just drag in our AI agent and we will hit build and now what this will do is it will add a few different components and one of those components is the actual behavior tree so this is the behavior tree using this solo external behavior tree which comes with the deathmatch AI kit and then um, let's see what else does it include it includes this deathmatch agent component and this deathmatch agent component contains an assault rifle uh, model or a, a available weapon and this is used by one of the behavior tree tasks to determine which weapon the agent should use if you go back and later add another weapon you can just click this plus button and then kind of go through the different options of what what type of weapon it is uh, take a look at the documentation I kind of go to explain more in depth on what each of these options do but that's what you do if you want to create another item or if you add another item and want the AI to be aware of it um, you'll just want to make sure this item definition is definitely updated to the new item that has been added otherwise it won't necessarily know where to find that new item so I don't have to specifically link any game objects or anything like that it does it all through this item definition so let me go ahead and remove that because we just have the one assault rifle now when I hit play we should actually see this character have some logic to him and he still just stands there and there's a reason for that but let's go ahead and okay so I am right in front of the AI agent let me see the behavior tree we can see that the behavior tree it is running right now but it's on the lowest priority task and it's just searching for target well this my player controlled character should be a target but for some reason he's not finding him and the reason for that is because my character is on the characters layer and the agent let me see the agent under the character layer manager wherever that component is let me keep searching there we go we can see that the enemy layers right now it's only enemy so we want this character to search or the agent to find both the character and the enemies layer for determining if it's an enemy or if the game object is an enemy so now let me go ahead and hit play and now when I go in front of him we should see yeah so now now he actually does start to attack so that worked well you'll notice though that this AI agent he doesn't actually start moving and the reason for that is because uh, if we go to the Nolan game object um, this is the AI agent and we click on the waypoints we'll see that there aren't any waypoints set up and the reason for that is because the deathmatch AI kit uh, the deathmatch manager isn't being spawned so you need to manually specify your waypoints so I'm gonna do that now and now when I specify those waypoints and I hit play we should see this character move So now the character is moving within the waypoints and eventually when he gets within sight yeah see now now he saw me and now he killed me so now now you have a working behavior tree set up with the deathmatch ai kit and it's not doesn't have the deathmatch scene specific dependencies so you can now just use this behavior tree modify it and do whatever you want with it within your own scene so that's how you set up 
both the project as well as the scene and agent to be used within the Deathmatch AI kit.